first medicine is a Dharma friend because somebody who's experienced that can be a good guide for you if you experience something they already have. They'll understand what's happening and they can help guide you through it. That's the reason for teachers or mentors. Uh, just like you might need a teacher for a musical instrument or how to cook, it's also useful to have a teacher for how to engage your own mind. Second thing is uh, be kind to yourself, please. And recognize that the appearance of strong emotions is a natural thing. Uh, it's good to have some kind of practice that anchors you. And it's also useful to recognize that in the midst of being anchored, you're likely to experience a particular kind of discomfort. Uh, particularly if uh, it's like this. If you have uh, some water that has mud in it, and it's constantly moving, then the water always looks cloudy, but the cloudiness feels natural. If you put the container down so it's not shaking anymore, then uh, slowly the particles of mud settle. And there's a point where the water is becoming clearer, but each individual particle of mud is now more visible. And so you get to see its shape, and you get to see something about its nature, and uh, people often have the impulse then to kind of try to swat it away. But when you swat it away, you stir the water up more and it gets muddy again. So it takes a certain patience to allow yourself to sit and to investigate as phenomena appear. What is this? It's helpful to have some way of slowing down your breathing and stabilizing your posture because that helps create a rhythm and an anchor. Maybe try 1% more than you're already doing. Often when people are in the midst of a difficult circumstance, uh, things become very uh, black and white. Oh, I want to make something completely go away. And uh, that would be very difficult for something that in many ways is a habit that's been cultivated for a lifetime. So it's okay to make it a little better. Uh, and to make it a little better, you might just want to slow down your breathing 1% or to focus on your posture just a little bit more, or maybe just to let the air come in and go out quietly like a breeze through a screen. You'll find that uh, when you feel that there's nothing you can do and you want to do something big and you can't, you'll find that you can do something small. So uh, there's something to be said for being a minimalist and being an incrementalist and taking that approach aside from finding some power where you think you have none is also a way of uh, um, finding a certain amount of uh, control and you end up relaxing because something that you thought won't change has changed. One other thing Whatever the quality of what you're experiencing, that quality changes over time. So if you feel that there's a demon or a dragon and it's eating you up, uh, the, the pace of the bites of the demon's teeth changes. The smell of the demon's breath changes, right? The feel of their tongue on your face as they're swallowing you changes. And when you recognize that these things are changing, you can also recognize that, oh, okay, so it's not always the same. And maybe if you allow it to go through the changes, you'll find out that there's nothing, in fact, that's swallowing you up at all, other than your own mind. And when you make peace with that, the demons have no interest in you <laughs> anymore. One other thing to be careful about. Some people have a temperament that when they quiet their mind or when they try to focus strongly on something, it actually stirs things up in a way that becomes intolerable. And although that's not true for many people, it is true for some people. So if that happens to happen where it feels like something about meditation practice is pushing you over the edge, please, don't do that thing that way. And consult with somebody who has a lot of experience about what might be a useful meditation practice for you, what might be a useful approach for you, and what other kinds of supports might help you 
as you do this because uh, it's possible if you take uh, an unwise approach to drive yourself crazy. And although it's rare, uh, it's important to say it because otherwise people expect things that are unrealistic.